Good morning theatre fans and welcome back to my channel. So today, Wednesday the 22nd of August, I am off to London for two days to see three shows. I am off to see Fun Home at the Young Vink, The uh, King and I at the Palace Theatre tonight and tomorrow I'm going to see my all-time favourite musical, Little Shop of Horrors at the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. Very much looking forward to these uh, three shows. It's going to be a very, very busy two days. Staying over in London as well. Um, and I'm looking forward to having a lovely theatrical three days. Here I am, I got to the hotel and it was a really enjoyable journey, not too bad at all. Although instead of having 10 carriages on the train, we actually had five. Um, there wasn't any seat reservations. Luckily I, um, I didn't have a seat reservation this time. I actually got my ticket last minute. And so the train was quite full. Um, Reading Festival is on this week. So there's a lot of revelers on the train as well. Um, but all in all, yeah, good journey. Um, weather's quite warm now because the was raining in uh, back home this morning. So I'm just gonna go and get changed and head over to the Young Vic to see the matinee performance of Fun Home. Now, this is a musical that I have heard of, but I've never seen, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing this show um, as well.
come out to get a bit of fresh air. I've got my programme and my ticket as well. So just wait for the doors to open. It starts at half past two. And just bumped into a lovely lady who saw me in this programme and a lovely old chat with her. And um, yeah, I'm really in a good mood to go and see the show and um, I'll let you know what I think of it after. Okay, so the performance uh, matinee of Fun Home at half past two has been postponed due to a technical problem. What that problem is, I don't know, but they said it's going to take about 45 minutes and to come back at three. So I'm actually waiting outside, um, chilling, because it's um, very hot out in the side, uh, to get a bit of fresh air and hope that the show does go ahead um, at three. Um, luckily the show's only an hour and 45 minutes so I've got plenty of time between this show and the next um, but it's a bit of a pain so we're just hanging around waiting because nobody seems to know what's going on um, so we'll see what happens Foundation, twisting floorboards, shoddy pipes, a gaping hole. It's a lot, it's a lot to keep under control. Something cracking, something's rotting, piles of ruin and debris. Killing me, crushing me, pushing me. But when the sunlight hits the parlor wall at certain times of day, I see how fine this house could be. I see it so damn clear. What's the matter? Why am I standing here? Your swagger and your bearing and the just right clothes you're wearing, your short hair and your dungarees and your lace up boots and your key. Hello and welcome back to the review part of my vlog and as you have just seen I went to see Fun Home at the Young Vic in London. Um, a show that I've heard of the name but know nothing about. I was very much looking forward to seeing a new musical that I've never seen before and also in a uh, venue that I've ne also never been to either and I've got to say I thoroughly enjoyed both of them. Okay so Fun Home is um, a little bit of a strange story to describe. Um, it's based on the 2006 graphic novel of the same name and um, it's basically about a family um, that the daughter or the lead character in the show on a self-discovery of her own sexuality as well as her um, relationship with her dad who also is um, a secret closet um, homosexual and also her relationship with her family but it's also intertwined through um, different um, all the different eras of her life from when she was a little girl to when she was in her teens and obviously as an adult and they all intertwine through the whole of the story so one moment she'll have her as a little girl played by a different character then she'll be in college played by another different character than herself as as an adult and you see the different uh, relationships built over the over a period of time as well and that basically is the whole story is her self-discovery of who she actually is. Um, it was very well done, um, a very very small cast. Um, I thought everybody did a fantastic job. 
wasn't the best show that I've ever seen, I'll be honest, but um, I did enjoy and I'm glad that I went to see it. And um, even though it is on a short run in London, it is definitely worth going to see. Um, it's quite um, an emotional roller coaster of a ride, quite relatable um, for many, many people. And um, it was very well acted out as well. But um, like I said, I'm glad I've seen it, but um, I wasn't blown away by it. And uh, I mean, I'm sure I probably will see it again in the future, but I, it, 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 uh, it's one of those shows that I'm glad I've seen, but I'll wait a while until I see it again. Okay, so the show itself is made up of a very small cast. In fact, you actually could fit everybody into a two page spread in the program as well. And the uh, lead actress, Alison, um, as played by um, Kaiser Hammerland. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. I tried my best then. Um, who was great. I thought she was fantastic. She sort of narrates the whole story. So she's always constantly on stage um, interacting with her younger selves, but not actually physically interacting with each other, um, but she's sort of there in the background. So she gets to see what she's like as a little girl, as, as with, uh, building a relationship with her father. Then she goes, when well, she goes to college and she starts meeting um, other sort of uh, lesbian and gay people and sort of builds up a relationship with um, another girl there. And then obviously herself as she's older, um, years later as well, um, with, with the, we just rekindle her relationship with her dad. Um, so we also have um, in the program they call it Medium Allison, um, which is basically the college student, um, as played by Eleanor Kane. And I gotta say, I thought she was um, brilliant. I thought she did a fantastic job, a really powerful voice, and really liked her acting and singing ability as well. Um, you also had Jenna Russell as mum. I saw Jenna Russell a few years ago in Songs for a New World um, over in the other palace and uh, she was great. But I think I felt with Jenna Russell though, she wasn't on stage much at all, so you couldn't really relate much to her, but you did feel sorry for her character when um, she finds out that her daughter is a lesbian, but also at the same time that she's been hiding a secret herself, that she's always known that her husband is um, is gay and that he's been going out meeting um, guys and she's been trying to uh, run a normal household uh, with her family um, uh, while all this is going on. So she's quite a broken character and she has a moment towards the end of Act 2 where it all comes out and um, you do feel sorry for her as well. You also then have... Um, the love interest of um, teenage um, Alison, as played by uh, Sh Shirley Skeet. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong as well on that. Um, she was great as well in the whole program. Um, but And then you also have Ashley Samuels, who plays several characters as well, including love interest to the father um, there. Um, but I've got to say, the uh, standout performer for me has got to be Bruce, the father, as played by Zubin Fala. And I've got to say, he was outstanding. I just, uh, from the moment he came on stage, that stage presence throughout the whole of the show was just incredible. You didn't know whether to like the guy, to dislike the guy, to feel sorry for him, because all the emotions were there and you experienced it all with him as you go through the whole of the show. Um, he, his portrayal of um, of a father trying to be very sort of father figure to his whole family to hold them all together but at the same time battling his inner demons and feelings of being um, a closet gay guy but eventually he does go out and meet other people as well and builds on that confidence while trying to um, act normal if you want to whatever normal is these days um, but try to be a normal family and try to, um, to have these two separate lives and he tries to juggle them. It's very, very difficult because later on in the show, his wife finds out, kicks him out and he goes and lives in the flat um, to live his own life. What I saw in him was, um, if you, those of you who have seen the film American Pie, um, Jim's dad, he, that's played by Eugene uh, Levy, Levi, and um, the look, the mannerisms, everything was that character from American Pie. And I just thought, it, okay, I may not be relevant to the, to this particular show, but that's the, that's that's how I can only describe this character because I thought he was a brilliant, brilliant actor, and I just loved the way 
um, he portrayed his character. I know I'm repeating myself here, but he was, he was generally brilliant. And there is um, a spoiler alert here, he actually um, dies at the end of Act 2. Um, we already know this anyway when you watch the show because it's mentioned at the start. Um, hence where Alison, the daughter, um, is reminiscing about her life because her father has been died. He actually dies by um, having been out to meet guys and actually gets knocked over by a truck. And I gotta say, while I'm on about that, the lighting in that scene is incredible. I gotta say to those guys who do the lighting in the Young Vic uh, on this particular production, when that scene is on, the shadows and the lights and the empty stage was just brilliant. Um, it was a tense moment and I thought it was very, very clever. And the whole show was brilliant with the lighting, but this particular scene when the father is singing about how he's broken and um, you know, what purpose of life, etc., and the shadows, um, the long shadows, um, the angles, etc., fantastic. There's a big ball of light to represent the truck and the blackout, and it's gone. And it was very, very powerful. And I've got to say, the lighting people, well done. Fantastic job on this show. It was brilliant. So the only people that are missing out are the, uh, the young kids. And there are two groups of children. You've got group A and you've got group B. So when I went there, I saw group A. Having said that, when I arrived at the Young Vic, I wanted to get there early enough because I like to take in the atmosphere, especially as I've never been there before either. And we were told that there was a little bit of a technical hitch or problem uh, prior to the show starting at half past two, which is fine, these things happen, etc. All we were told is just a technical hitch. So they said to come back in about five, 10 minutes. So I thought I'm not gonna go wandering up, I'll just have a drink at the bar and um, hang around. So five, 10 minutes came, nothing was happening, nothing was being announced, doors weren't opening. And somebody came out um, to announce that the problem was bigger than they thought and to had to come back at three o'clock. So nobody again knew what was going on. So um, all they said was just a technical problem. So I thought, seeing as it was so, so hot inside the, uh, the cafe area, I went to sit outside and uh, get a bit of fresh air. So I don't want to travel too far away just in case they come out to announce that everything's been sorted and we can go back in. But um, come three o'clock, I went back in and again, there was a little bit of a hitch. They said, oh, so anyway, and I asked what was going on. So um, I haven't spoken to one of the uh, members of staff who worked there. Apparently, the young girl who um, is meant to be in Group A had fallen ill prior to the show starting and she wasn't sure if she was going to go on or not. And they decided to get uh, the girl from Group B, as played by Harriet Turnbull. Turnbull? And um, she was to come in from wherever she lived um, to step in, uh, in the role um, with another group of children that she's never worked with before because. The, th the children work in their own respective groups. They don't actually swap at all. And that uh, this girl was coming to join these uh, these uh, these two children here, and um, was have to obviously practice a mic up before the show just so she um, because obviously when you're in a group you know exactly where everybody, how you relate to each other and where everybody, even though the choreography is exactly different to both groups, um, she wanted to make sure that she could um, you know that she felt comfortable and settled in her role, and um, for a young girl like that to step in at the very very last moment she did a fantastic job even though she knew the role she does the role in her groups anyway but to come in with two children that she probably doesn't know that well um, and interact that well with she did a brilliant brilliant job you would never have known to be honest um, so yeah it was sad to see that the, the original Alison or small Alison as they say in the program um, was ill um, um, and it's nice to actually have somebody else obviously step in like obviously as an adult you haven't understood it straight away and, and and so on but when it comes to children obviously you've got to take things a lot more carefully and um, for fair play for this uh, girl to come in and um, because she I think she was performing that night so obviously group A would be say in the, in the matinee and, and group B would be in the evening and, and so I'm sure they alternate because they only still have so many hours to work um, so yeah, that was the technical hitch. So we eventually got in at half past three 
Um, the show's not very long, it, it doesn't uh, have an interval at all. I think it's an hour and 40 minutes, the whole show. And um, so yeah, we got in at half past three. I was a little bit worried because I thought, one, I thought, please don't cancel the show because I've come all this way and I've paid good money to see this show. But I understand that these problems do happen, but no, they did say that uh, no, they would, in most cases, the show does go on. Um, but what I was more worried about was that I had another show later on that evening um, to get to, which luckily I did have plenty of time anyway. Um, um, but it did cross my mind I thought would I be able to get from one theatre venue to the other in time as well as get a bit of food in between but I did so um, yeah so half past three we got into the venue like I said I've never been inside this theatre before um, lovely little small intimate venue um, apparently it does change so uh, positions um, a lot depending on what the show is a bit like the Southwark Playhouse um, this one it was basically all the rows in one side and the stage on the other so we all facing one um, it was a rake so every seat was fantastic you didn't have your own individual seat it was benches sort of, of comfortable benches the cushion benches and you had like a number on it so you sat in your little sort of area um, it was sold out there was it was packed in there and so I sat in row D seat 18 and um, it was very direct very central uh, to the to the stage and if I'm being honest any seat in the whole of this theatre would have been a great seat anyway but I do like to be quite central I have not been there before I didn't know where to sit so I tried to go for something that's very central and close to the stage don't like to be too close um, but I don't like to be further back either so I like to be just in the middle and that was a great seat and I certainly would sit there again if, if the, the seating plan is exactly the same yeah, so even though I wasn't blown away by the show, I did actually enjoy it. Um, the music was great. Um, I wouldn't say it was memorable. Um, there were a couple of moments uh, that sort of uh, elements of songs that do stick in the melodies and certain lines. Um, but I thought the orchestra did a fantastic job. Well, the band rather did a fantastic job. They were on the stage on the sides. You can actually see them as well. Um, the staging was very simple. Um, well, it's quite misleading, if I'm being honest, because when you go on, the, when you walk in, there is obviously no curtain; it's just a stage. And on this stage were all the props and all the set in the centre. And as the story goes on, um, elements of the set come out from the centre and get into position. They all keep moving around. And what was lovely, there was actually a revolve um, on the floor as well, which I didn't know about, which is quite uh, nice as well. So by placing the grand piano and the chairs and the bookcases, etc., and you can rotate around. Um, and it's very, very simple. Um, there was one strange scene I thought towards in act two, which um, I didn't quite get, if I'm being honest, but I understand why they did it now. Um, a big white freeze came down from the fly tower and it was literally a big, big white, white, white wall um, with a door in it and that was it. And a lot of the action takes place in front of that in the second act this is um, which represents the the flat of where the father lives um, after he's been kicked out of his family and a lot of the interaction between the kids as well with the dad and i thought okay I thought, why why are they doing all this scene at the very very front of the stage with hardly any room you know you had all the stage behind i thought very strange for this just a white freeze to come down and um Anyway, lo and behold, the freeze actually does go up and you're brought back to modern day times where, where, you know, where they're obviously a lot older, etc. And to find the whole stage has actually opened up into this big grand house with a chandelier, with paintings, with bookcases, lavish tables, grand pianos, the lot. And you, you never saw that coming, if I'm being honest, because the stage has a... Um, well, I thought it was very realistic. Um, a brick wall halfway, well, what looks like the back of the stage, but actually turns out to be um, a fly that goes, uh, that does actually open up uh, to reveal a back area of the stage as well. And in there was all the part of the house as well. So yeah, this freeze was there to, to for them to open the set up to reveal this big, big, big house. Um, and that came as a really pleasant surprise and a shock because I wasn't expecting it. And it was great. Um, I don't know why they hadn't done that at the start because the house, this particular house that they live in, is um, is represented throughout the whole of the show anyway. Because like I so say, you cut back and forth to college, to modern day, to to when they were with children as well. So this house has always been there. So I don't know why they um, had to open up like that. But um, it was stunning, <laughs> absolutely stunning. And uh, what was nice is you actually see them towards the end, obviously when the father goes 
when he does get killed. Um, they close the back off where you see how they actually did the set of the, the folding of the, um, the scenery at the back. And like I said, having watched it up until that moment, I've never knew that that would have done that. So that was a nice, nice surprise, hence I understand why they did the freeze. But at the time I was thinking, what is this freeze for? But um, So staging, very good. Lighting I've already touched on. I thought the lighting was stunning. The whole thing it was very, very dark but also very, very light in areas as well. And it was just right. And like I said, that ending with the, with the shadows, just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So that's my review on Fun Home at the Young Vic. Have you seen it or are you going to see it on its short run? Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on it. Maybe you can enlighten me a little bit more on the show as well. Maybe I've got some things wrong, I'm not too sure, but um, I'd love to hear from you. So if you have anything to say, please put it in the little comments down below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button as well. I try to regularly post videos as often as I can. I visit uh, London quite often throughout the years and um, also I visit Cardiff so I'm always seeing um, plenty of shows uh, and plenty more reviews to come as well so um, once again thank you for watching and until next time happy theatre.